I have been loving the built engine with the added boost. I'm running 20 PSI and it feels good. It feels like a like a healthy a healthy car now. The only issue I've had lately is my temperature, is my my temperature of my oil, the temperature of my coolant. Things have been pretty high because of I guess the added boost and just, you know, little things like this hood exit wastegate that doesn't it doesn't really help anything. It just looks cool. So I went on eBay and I found myself a pretty thick oil cooler. It's about the size of my hand. Um, I believe it said it was for like BMWs and M3s, but I know it's gonna fit. And I went on Amazon and I found this oil adapter thing here that is going to allow me to run and lines off of it into the oil cooler. And I believe they're 10 AN. I believe that's what I got. So those are 10 AN. And I also, with this oil cooler kit, I'll link, I'll link the oil cooler kit in the description. It came with this pretty hefty fan. So it actually keeps things cool and it's not just relying on wind. So without the oil cooler, I was seeing temperatures, oil temperatures rise to like 260. And I think that's way too hot. So hopefully with the oil cooler, it keeps everything to like 220-ish, 200 degrees. And the next thing I'm gonna do after the oil cooler is figure out a radiator solution. I do have a Megan Racing aluminum radiator, which does work with some, some fucking no-name fans that I got from somewhere. I forgot where, I think eBay. And it works, but I wanna keep the temperatures, like I said, around 200 for both. Um, and I've been looking at the Chase Bay's tucked radiator that's like three inches thick. It's it's a lot bigger than this. And because I have a tube frame here, well, tube front end, I can modify it and make a bigger radiator fit. So I'm gonna think about that a little bit because this works for now. So again, the reason I'm doing this is because my temperatures, my old temperature was hitting like 260-ish driving in traffic on the highway and that limits a lot for me because I don't want it to overheat and you know not overheat I just don't want the oil to get too hot so pretty simple installation I'm just gonna take off the oil filter right here now what we're gonna do is install this piece here which is like an adapter I suppose for the two pieces that sit on top of that like so, I think it's this one first here. Then it's this one here with the piece right through it. That's sitting real nice. Real nice. Yep, that looks like it. That way you have your two AN fittings coming out right here. I'm sure you can angle, angle it how you want, but um, this makes the most sense for me since my turbo is right, right there. So I'm gonna keep it kinda angled and then tighten this down. All right, so that's pretty tight. Now we're gonna put the oil filter right on top. It. It's looking good so far. Alright, so all of that is installed. Kept it pretty clean. And I'm going to run this under here. Like so. And I think I'm going to run the oil line, I mean the oil cooler right in front here. So more or less. All right, it took a lot of just trial and error, but I tucked it on the passenger side right there. I think that's good. It's protected by the bash bar with access to both AN fittings on top. And it's literally just zip ties, which is fine with me for now. So I figure something else out. I was gonna mount it on top, but there is no, 
the hood scoop so it really makes no sense I was gonna mount it right here but I don't know it just kind of covers everything and I don't want it to ever like leak oil onto everything so this was the next best place that I could think of like I said it's mounted right in there nice and solid a few zip ties and um, it's enough space for the fan right back here to blow or to take air away from the the core here and leaves me enough room in the front here like I said if I was to hit anything I won't destroy it and that's ultimately what this bar is for just in case I do fuck up and hit something so I'm going to run the ANs the ANs already ran here but I'm going to see exactly where I want them and possibly shorten them a little bit just to have less you know oil traveling through these all right the lines are ran I shortened this line a little bit well more than a little bit about 10 inches and I feel like that's a good good length now this this line is a little uh, a little long but it should be okay I'm going to start the engine let it run for a second see if anything leaks shut it down check the oil and then um, if everything checks out I will take this thing out and give it a give it a rip we'll see what happens all right let's get it started Alright, it looks good so far. I'm not seeing any leaks at all. Yeah, no leaks. It feels like this one's getting warmer. So we don't have anything returning yet. There's a thermostat in that fitting so oh, as soon as that opens I'm sure we'll get cooler oil going through one and hotter oil going through the other one but like I said I'm gonna stop it check the oil in a minute just to make sure we're not going low on oil So far, so good. Seems like it's been steady around 165-ish. 
this is my uh, my coolant temp. I mean, this is my oil temp. This is coolant temp. Uh, this is air intake temp, and that is my ethanol content level, and that's my map switch mode. So map switch four, map switch four is the most aggressive map, and um, I believe I'm on 20 psi with that map. So it seems like 160 is it's kind of low. So we'll see what happens when I drive around a little more. But yeah, so far so good. It's not spiking to like 220, 230 yet. Coming up to 170-ish. Oh, not even. It comes right back down. That's crazy. So, it, from what I can see, it's working. All right, so I just ripped it up and down the street. Um, my buddy Roshad saw me in the in the Supra, and I literally got sideways in like second and third gear. But 171, I didn't see temps above 185-ish, and my coolant temp has been rock steady for some reason. It's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of, kind of suspect. I don't know if it's supposed to be rock steady like that, but I ain't upset. Um, it seems like the oil cooler has been doing its job. I'm going to go outside and check to see if it's leaking at all. And, uh, and yeah, so far so good. I'm not upset at it at all. I'm going to do it while it's still on. Uh, so we can see if there's any actual leaks anywhere. No leaks on this at all. Woo. This side's super hot. This side is hot, but it's not as hot. Fan is working beautifully behind there. It's looking good. I'm not seeing any leaks at all. Um, super hot. No, no leaks. It sounds good. It's looking good. I do like that it's tucked under there. So it's not super, uh, doesn't stick out in front of the intercooler like most people. Yeah, this one isn't as hot. It's hot, but it's not, you know steaming like this one is 
so I'll take it as a success. These fans are super loud. And I have them wired just to one button right here. Those are all my fans. So the two fans that are on the radiator and the fan that goes to the oil cooler are all wired to that one button just so I can keep them on consistently and um, make sure I always have cooling, especially in traffic. I do drive this thing pretty regularly. Um, and you know, if I'm ever in line at the track or something, I do plan on drifting this soon on the track once I figure out my 350Z rear axle situation. The only, the only thing I'm missing right now is a shop that can cut the stubs off with a lathe and then TIG weld the stubs onto the actual adapters because I do not want to cut them and have them lopsided and have it wiggle when I'm sliding or just driving in general. But um, that should be the last piece of the puzzle. Once I get a shop to do that, she will be She'll be good to go with the 350Z axles. But yeah, for the oil mod, the oil cooler mod, I'm not upset. I will link what oil cooler I went with and the adapter plate. I got that from Amazon, I got that from eBay. These are specifically for BMWs apparently, but it's a 10AN oil cooler with a 10AN adapter plate and it worked perfectly. You will have to obviously chop your lines to make them fit wherever you want them but it's a really easy process just look it up and I'm sure there's plenty of videos on how to do that so yeah man oil temps are looking good I did rip it and it felt good I'm gonna take it on a longer drive at some point and I will probably put that on Instagram instead I'll see if I'll make a YouTube video on it but I'm not too uh, fond on making these videos because they take a long time and they don't really draw a lot of engagement I mean it's not, it's not the most practical use of my time. So, yeah, that's the oil cooler mod. I'll keep updating on the 350Z axle mod on the FRS diff with the FRS knuckles. And hopefully something will pop up soon with that. And my new wide body should be here soon. I already have the side skirts buried under that cardboard right there. Some regular, regular looking side skirts. But I will get to that once I actually install everything and um, figure out what I'm going to do for paint for this thing. Again, I'm going to keep some parts purple, but I'm also going to switch it up and try to do something a little different with this. Alright, so I'll see y'all soon. See you later.